Great. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and with that, uh, I think we're going to get started. So our first performers are coming down now. They are um, Dr. Pooja Goswami Pavan, um, A. Pavan, and Rohan Prabhudesai. Dr. Pooja Goswami Pavan is a Hindustani or North Indian classical vocalist, composer, and teacher. An acclaimed vocalist, she has performed at many prestigious venues uh, throughout the Twin Cities, nation, and world. And she's an active composer, has released several recordings featuring numerous, numerous original compositions, um, and worked with dance and theater organizations. Amazing work. Um, Dr. A. Pavan is a wonderful tabla player and teacher. He has performed for numerous dance and theater productions and has also worked very actively with the Indian Music Society of Minnesota, IMSAM. Um, and he has, among his many performances, include a performance uh, with the St. Paul Chamber Orchestra along with Nirmala Rajas, uh, Rajasekhar. And finally, Rohan Prabhudesai, uh, has been studying Hindustani and Western classical music for now uh, 24 years and more recently jazz. Um, and he's uh, very active as a performer in these multiple traditions, um, has studied classical piano with Edwin Lopez and Ron Thayer, is working on studying jazz with Fred Fisher, and studied um, at the Goa Kala um, Academy and later with Kedar Napade, um, uh, as a harmoniumist, which is what he'll be performing tonight. So please give uh, them a warm welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Pavan, for 
for uh, saying the, the fun at the beginning. Uh, thanks Rohan for accompanying me and Pavan. So as Pavan said that I will start with the evening melody, evening rag called the Agya Man.
Thank you. <clears throat> the next piece will be uh, what we call as a tarana, which has no words. It has meaningless syllables. Tana na, dere na. These are merely carriers of notes, and uh, <clears throat> they make it convenient for the tongue to go really fast and create interesting rhythmic patterns. So while the previous composition was focused on melody, this one will be focused a little bit more on the rhythmic aspect of it. You will also hear within the composition the rhythmic syllables of the tabla drums and uh, hopefully at some point she will use some of those syllables to create interesting rhythmic ideas in the music. So Tarana in Rag, Rageshri.
your sum the first beat. This is like when you catch the ball.
Thank you all so much. I think we have consumed uh, the time allotted to us, so we'll finish it here, and maybe some other time. We'll I think my soccer match was pretty long, so that's why. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Beth, first of all, uh, and uh, Sumanth, uh, for inviting us here and giving us such an opportunity. And thanks to all of you, each one of you. Thank you so much for listening. To Hope to see you guys again next concert. Thank you. Thank you, Rohan. Thank you, Pavan. Hi, my name is Ellen Stanley, and I am an artist and DJ and uh, music promoter here in the Twin Cities, and I'm delighted to be a part of this special event, Beyond the Pandemic Showcase. It's sponsored by the University of Minnesota's Liberal Arts Engagement Hub and the School of Music, and we've been enjoying some really wonderful performances, and then I get to chat with all of the performers and talk with them a little bit about how their lives have maybe changed or uh, maybe what has stayed the same before and after the pandemic and uh, right now I'm so excited to speak with the first performers of the evening got to catch some of the set and it sounded great uh, Dr. Pooja Goswami Pavan and uh, Dr. A. Pavan and Rohan uh, Prabhu Desai and I'm so excited to have you uh, join us uh, today and uh, First of all, I wanted to ask a little bit about your background. Um, uh, I know you all do lots of different things with music, not just performance, teaching, and uh, working as, as students and always learning new things. Maybe uh, each of you could just uh, briefly describe your background and maybe how you came to make music together. Hello, thank you for this opportunity to talk to you about us and our music. Uh, my name is Pavan. I'm a tabla player, um, also teacher and composer, performer in the Twin Cities. I collaborate with a bunch of artists outside of the Hindustani classical, which is North Indian classical music genre, which is our primary genre. And this is Pooja. She's also not only a musician, but my life partner as well. So obviously, we come together to do a lot of music uh, most of the time. She's a Hindustani vocalist, uh, which is North Indian classical music, uh, teacher, composer, and a scholar of music as well. And that on the left is uh, Rohan Prabhudesai. He's visiting us from New Jersey. He was here just to join us for this special evening of music. And he's a, a phenomenal harmonium player as well as a pianist. And he has studied not just Hindustani classical music, but also jazz and, and classical piano. So um, how did we come together? Well, uh, we have performed in the past in Hindustani music, as Pooja was explaining earlier. This is typically the format. Uh, there is a lead performer, in this case it is her, and then two of us support her in the music. I play the drums and he plays another melodic instrument. So that kind of accompanies her voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was your performance musical life uh, like before the pandemic? Uh, I know, again, two of you are teachers, you're also a student. So I'd love to know um, uh, both as performers and maybe also in your other work, um, other parts of your musical life, uh, uh, maybe uh, what was it like before the pandemic okay. yeah you want to say so yeah uh, before the pandemic of course i was super super busy calendar was full and i was uh, you know teaching i was collaborating and touring i did my last concert on i clearly remember on uh, february 2nd 2020 in delhi and in March, when I was coming back, then I, it, it all stopped. Uh, so it was very busy life. Mm -hmm. And during the pandemic, it all moved to the virtual thing, you know, virtual concert, virtual teaching. And of course, it slowed down. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 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 And, and uh, how, d how was your musical life like before the pandemic? Was it also very busy? It was, yeah. Uh, it was very busy, lots of concerts and performances. 
Um, and al although we talk about sort of the, the negative effects of 2020 and the pandemic, it's it's nice to see that at least back in New York, New Jersey, things are for the last year or so have been almost back to normal, which is great to see. And uh, before the pandemic, I performed or had my focus on certain things. That mentality shifted in 2020. Uh, I did a lot of my own practice, uh, you know, worked on things I probably wouldn't have had the time to work on pre-pandemic, was able to shift my mentality and, and focus on, on other things. And now uh, I've met so many people through, you know, virtual collaborations and it's great to see that now we're, we're starting to get back to normal. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about um, uh, kind of making music during the pandemic. Pooja, you mentioned uh, that everything was so busy and then it just came to a halt. And you also mentioned how, you know, you had suddenly time to focus on more things. I'd love to know about some of the, the aside from maybe having more mental space uh, and time on your hands <laughs> and not performing, um, you know, what creatively were you able to dig into that maybe you hadn't before? Oh yeah. Um, I'll just say quickly and then pass it on to Pooja. So I, uh, as, you, as you mentioned, we had a lot more time on our hands, so that allowed us to sort of self-reflect mm -hmm. on what kind of music we were doing and what we would like to do going forward. Um, obviously, we had to adapt to using virtual tools, not just for teaching, but um, just for doing a lot of recording and reflecting on that. And, and then this gave us space to compose and pick up new poetry and she did a lot of composing during that time. We also did virtual concerts, mm -hmm. uh, but far fewer than uh, we used to. Mm -hmm. And uh, would you like to add yeah, anything to that? I would like to, as Pavan and Rohan, they said that we were before that doing, and then as Rohan said that at least there was no deadline in front of mm -hmm. you, like your concert is coming up or your collaboration date is coming. There was a space to sit down with yourself, with your music and poetry. So that was really, really a beautiful chance for me, for him. And I can assure about Rohan that f for all of the musicians to sit down and go deeper and deeper into the music and art. Mm -hmm. So m it really gave us, it was somewhere uh, a blessing mm -hmm. for me. I can talk about that where I was going deeper into the music and uh, did a lot and uh, did recordings for the yoga, uh, one of the yoga teachers in India. Mm -hmm. And they are doing meditation with that. So it's, it's I'm really uh, Yeah, and it's that. interesting because you work obviously internationally quite a bit, not yeah. just here in the Twin Cities. And you had been coming back from India, you know, your last big trip before the pandemic uh, set in. Um, were those relationships strengthened more by the pandemic, uh, be, you know, beyond maybe your usual circles? Or did you find that uh, you were still connecting with the same people? No, I connected more deeper, you know, and uh, in my in my thinking, I connected with myself more deeper, so I could strengthen the other relationship with others. So right, you had more to give yeah. after <laughs> tending yeah. to yourself. Yeah. Yes. I think the one thing the pandemic taught us is that life doesn't have to be so busy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think we've all learned just, that. Yeah, just <laughs> just professing your craft, yeah. fine. We get caught up in that, and so it gave us a kind of a reset. Yeah. Um, of course, in many ways, it was extremely bad and horrible, but. At, at least this way, if there is some solace to be found from the experience, it was this. Yeah, yeah. And Rohan, you mentioned that you also made a lot of more connections through virtual collaborations. And um, I'm, I'm not sure if you are lucky enough to, to live with a musical partner, but, <laughs> um, uh, you know, did, was it was it uh, <laughs> was that a big change that you had to all of a sudden that you might have been uh, used to collaborating with people and all of a sudden you're at home and yeah, you have to suddenly learn how to collaborate with people online. I think it was a curve of adjusting to that. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, I mean, Zoom wasn't really a big thing. Yeah, none of us knew Zoom the, was, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I had to leave my apartment in New York. I went back to my parents' place in New Jersey because there was just more space, mm -hmm. grand piano, all my stuff, you know, th was there. So it slowly, I, you know, as we realized how serious it was, we realized that we're not going anywhere. So. Um, you know, that's the power of social media as well. People started, you know, hitting us up on Instagram and Facebook on, hey, we have free time. Let's <laughs> send tracks back and forth. Mm -hmm. So I got a lot better with using uh, technology and 
recording and uh, being able to do that at home and then just bouncing tracks back and forth with collaborators. And um, it's cool to, to still have those conversations even after the pandemic now. Yeah, yeah. And how did your teaching and being both, you know, teachers and, and, and learning, um, uh, studying your craft, uh, how did that change uh, during the pandemic? Were you still, did you just move that online or did you take a break from teaching? Or Yeah, we had to pretty much move it online mm -hmm. because it was just too risky to be in the same room with a bunch of people. And especially when you're teaching younger kids, we just didn't want to take a chance. So almost all of our teaching moved online. And that presented its own challenges, as Rohan was pointing out. But slowly, we learned to adapt, uh, including just the technology itself started evolving because uh, this tool called Zoom never had a very good sound capability in mm -hmm. the beginning. And in the beginning, when we used to give instruction or do music, the sound was just atrocious, but it improved. And there were all these new settings that came into place that allowed us to transmit sound better. And uh, classroom teaching almost went completely online, both yeah. for both of us. And so much so that nowadays, uh, kids almost expect you to be able to offer it online. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, you that know, there is some reluctance about being in person still, yeah. but uh, that's the way life is. Yeah, and um, so what does your musical life look like now? Have you brought some of those tools from the pandemic um, back into your your current life? I know things are, as you mentioned, Rohan, things are coming back and uh, certainly we're getting to enjoy live music together. Um, uh, how much of that has, has stayed? So in terms of teaching, one good thing that has happened because of the pandemic is that we are able to now teach remote students Previously, she yeah. was very picky about having students in person yeah. in the class. Mm -hmm. She would not teach remotely. And I was kind of doing it off and on, but the pandemic definitely made it a necessity. And now that we are used to it, we are more accepting of students, say, to say sitting in Boston or mm -hmm. New Orleans or wherever, to be able to join the class. And sometimes if a student is you know, sick or just has something else and doesn't want to take the long commute, it's a good thing to have them participate virtually mm -hmm. so they can at least listen in if not if nothing else so there are those advantages you can say um, in terms of teaching um, yeah and then this uh, this thing taught me like if I I was in India I mean when I was in India uh, in September and October so at that time I used to take complete off from teaching so but this time I did not do that so you I didn't learn the teaching. lesson of, of uh, slowing down. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I did not, not because my students, I they're the younger ones. They 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 shouldn't take a break because it's really bad on them. So I would say, okay, I'm in so and so city, and sometimes you know that internet uh, connection is bad, and they'll be happy. Okay, they can't hear you, but I I think I kind of imbibed it, and on and off I use that. I I think it's good. It's better than nothing. At mm -hmm. least we have something. So, yeah. and uh, Rohan, as a as someone who is studying music as well as performing it, um, have you? Uh, do you feel like everything's sort of back, or are you also doing sort of a hybrid of? So I have a little bit of a unique. So one of my my jazz teachers, he's eighty five years old. So I've started going to him now. But even when things started opening up, I was still reluctant to go to him mm -hmm. uh, more as a risk to him mm -hmm. because he's uh, you know he's he's a extremely senior person um so that in that aspect i still haven't been able to comfortably you know go to him mm -hmm. um but i think otherwise we're we're back at least mm -hmm. in, in new york uh been performing pretty often mm -hmm. uh recording um and i think out of the pandemic uh one thing that i i figured out is uh, i need to be a little more selective with with things that i do even non-musical things, you know, reading and, and set aside time for Be the things. Be more careful for your, of your time. Right. Whereas pre-pandemic, it was like yes to everything. And, and now yeah. it's like very selective with, with my time and uh, realizing the things I want to spend time on. Uh, well, speaking of that, I, I think uh, you all mentioned that it yeah, made you more thoughtful during the pandemic, had more time for self-reflection and all of that. So in addition to maybe thinking about your time, um, what one thing do you want audiences to think about in relationship to music? Like, did you have any epiphanies about either how you wanted to approach or make music or what you thought was important to bring to the world? No, I think uh, music should be heard live as much as possible. So uh, my only 
request to everybody listening to this conversation is that attend live events, support local musicians, support local music, support your local clubs, buy their merchandise, buy their music. Don't go to Spotify, by the way. <laughs> and, 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 and come to the live concert because that's really where it is. Watts and all, that's the live setting is where music thrives. Yeah. So that's all we can say. And hopefully things will come back to whatever we deem as normal. Um, well, sometime maybe in better. the near future, maybe no, better, maybe it. better. <laughs> yeah, because music is such a sort of a visceral experience. You have to be in the room. Uh, so, I think he said. Okay, <laughs> well, that seems to be a good note to end <laughs> on. Uh, that everyone should go out and support artists and uh, buy their music and uh, and also enjoy being together yes, again, absolutely. right? Exactly. I mean, this is a unique thing we get to do now. Yes. So, thank you so much for spending your time uh, with us, both your sharing your music and then also this this time uh, talking with me about Our this. Our pleasure and such thank a you treat. So much thank for you so much. Thank you. Thanks.